In this video, we're going to deal with operations with mixed fractions. So if we have, if we have uh, a question like this, one and a half minus three eighths. Well, if we want to see what this result is, the first thing we're going to have to do is to change this one and a half into an improper fraction. And remember, we change a mixed fraction to an improper fraction by this method. If there's a multiplication sign between the two and the one, and then an addition sign, one and one half is the same as two times one plus one. And that's all divided by two. I haven't done anything with the three eighths, so I'll just rewrite it. And now, 2 times 1, dealing with the numerator of this fraction, 2 times 1 is 2, plus 1 is 3, so I have 3 halves minus 3 eighths. And now I'm in a situation where I have to subtract two fractions, and remember, when you're adding and subtracting, you need to have a common denominator. So, to review that method, we have a common denominator, and we will make our common denominator the larger of the two, which is 8. And then we have to answer the question, we take the first denominator, 2 times what number will give us 8? And the answer to that is our magic number, which in this case is 4. And so then, we then, in front of this fraction, multiply by 4 over 4. And now we have to use the skill of multiplying fractions, and we multiply, remember, two fractions by multiplying straight across the top and straight across the bottom. So 4 times 3 is 12, and 4 times 2 is 8. So now we have 12 eighths minus 3 eighths, and now we do have a common denominator, and because we have a common denominator, we can then perform the operation in the numerator and put it all over the same denominator. So we get 12 minus 12 minus 3 all over 8 or 9 eighths. And now we can convert 9 eighths into we can convert 9 eighths into a mixed fraction by simply doing our long division. And we know that 8 evenly goes into 9 only one time. Performing the first step of our long division here, 1 times 8 is 8, and then we subtract, and I get a remainder of 1. So this tells me that 9 eighths is equivalent to 1, and 1, my remainder, over 8. And to give you a visual of what that looks like, I'm just going to remind myself of the question here. One and a half minus one and a half minus three eighths. So if I take one of my rulers here, and actually I'm going to need two rulers. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to mark on my ruler one and a half. So on the top ruler here, I'm going to mark my one and a half, which is right here. So one and a half, and now I want to subtract three eighths. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to superimpose this bottom ruler on the top ruler and I now have on the bottom ruler, I'm going to make a marking of 3 eighths, which is this line. And you know what, I'm going to put it just a little bit below so I don't cover the marking. And I'm going to do the same with this one. I can see where it is by the red there. So I now have 1 and a half, and I'm going to subtract, and my line didn't carry, but that's okay. I'm now going to subtract. There's one eighth, two eighths, three eighths. 
and it's tough to get this exact, but I'll just move it over a little bit. And now you can see, here was my original one and a half. And here is my three-eighths that I'm subtracting. And you can see that this line right here, this line right here is where I am left. And now if we take away the top ruler, we can see that I'm at one inch here and one-eighth here. So that just gives you a little bit of a visual of how these two fractions work. But one and a half minus three-eighths, the first thing we need to do is to convert the one and a half to an improper fraction. And then we need to find our common denominator. And then we need to simplify. And then if we wish, we can convert to a mixed fraction. If we look at a little bit of a harder example, and I won't use the ruler method with this one, I just wanted to show you for the first one. Let's look at 1 and 5 eighths plus 2 and 3 fourths. So we're going to convert both of these into improper fractions and then add them. 1 and 5 eighths is the same as 8 times 1 plus 5 all over 8 plus, and now 2 and 3 quarters is going to be 4 times 2 plus 3 all over 4. And this will give us now 8 times 1 is 8, 8 plus 5 is 13 eighths plus, and now 4 times 2 is 8, 8 plus 3 is 11 fourths. And now I realize I'm adding fractions. I don't have a common denominator. My common denominator is going to be the larger of my two numbers, which is 8. What do I have to multiply 4 by to get 8? And the answer is 2. So therefore, I multiply this 11 fourths fraction by 2 divided by 2. And this gives me 13 eighths plus 22 eighths. And now I have a common denominator, and so that's the same as 13 plus 22, all divided by 8. And 13 plus 22, all divided by 8, is 20, pardon me, 35 eighths. And now if I want to convert that into a mixed fraction, I divide 8 into 35 and see how many times it will go evenly. And I see that 8 goes into 35 four times. 4 times 8 is 32. I write it underneath, subtract, and I'm left with a remainder of 3. So therefore, 35 eighths is the same as 4, my remainder, 3, divided by my original denominator of eighths. So I get 4 and 3 eighths. Now another way, sort of a shortcut way of making this question a little bit easier is because we see we have an addition here, really, we could treat the whole numbers and the fractions separately and then combine them in the end. 1 plus 2 is 3. And then we don't have to worry about this improper fraction business. We just have to add 5 eighths plus 3 fourths. Again, our common denominator is going to be 8, so I'm going to multiply this fraction by 2 over 2, and this will give me 5 eighths plus 6 eighths, which is the same as 5 plus 6 all over 8, which is 11 eighths.
and 11 eighths. We now know 8 goes into 11 once. 1 times 8 is 8. We subtract, and we're left with a remainder of 3. So 11 eighths, 11 eighths is the same as 1 and 3 eighths. And so now we add our whole numbers to that. Remember, we had 3. So really, we now have 3 plus 1 and 3 eighths, which gives us 4, dealing with the whole numbers, and 3 eighths. And you see it's exactly the same. So sometimes you can simplify your work with the fractions by dealing with the whole numbers uh, and the fractions separately. Sometimes that's uh, easier and sometimes it's not. It really just depends on the numbers. Let's quickly then take a look at uh, one more example. Three and a half minus one and seven eighths. So see if you can follow along uh, with this as we do some of this in our head. Three times two, I'm now going to convert each of these into an improper fraction. Three times two is six. Six plus one, three times two is six. Six plus one is seven halves minus, and now eight times one is eight. Eight plus seven is 15 eighths. I don't have a common denominator. My common denominator is going to be 8. How do I get this denominator? How do I get this denominator to 8? I multiply it by 4. And so my magic number is 4. I multiply by 4 divided by 4, and I land up getting 4 times 7 is 28 eighths minus 15 eighths. And this gives me 28 minus 15 all over 8, which gives me 13 over 8. And 13 over 8, 8 goes into 13 one time. 1 times 8 is 8. Subtract, and I'm left with a remainder of 5. So 13 eighths is the same as 1 and 5 eighths. So that was uh, an example that was I just did a little bit more quickly uh, to see if you could sort of follow along and get the hang of it. So that should give you an idea of how to deal with mixed fractions uh, and operations on mixed fractions.